I like you to examine this Colgate's balance sheet. Here you have two years of data, 2020 and 2021. Why don't you have a quick look at it and analyze it? Your initial concern, of course, could be that where to begin? There's tons of data, assets, liabilities, shareholders, equity, and much, much more info within each category, right? So where do you begin? I understand that it can be intimidating for beginners, but do not worry. I'll help you with this. The very first step is to create a common size balance sheet. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj from wallstreetbojo.com and in this video we'll discuss all about common size balance sheet, how to prepare them and why they are so important. Let's get started. Let us take this sample balance sheet which we have. We have the assets data as well as the liabilities and shareholders equity data. Now, in order to analyze this, we need a common size balance sheet, right? So the word common suggests that you need to find a common denominator which will help us analyze every item in the balance sheet. So where we start is, is the common denominator that is the total assets or you can take this as total liabilities and shareholders equity. So in this approach, what you do is you divide each and every line item by this number. So divide by, let's say total assets, okay? Or it can be total liabilities and shareholders equity number as well. Why did I choose that? Because that's the largest number. So I would know what each and every line items are in relative terms, right? So that's the whole approach, common size balance sheet is basically dividing all line items by this total assets and seeing that as a percentage with that you will come to know how much is the proportion of which line item so let's do that right now so for cash and cash equivalents the approach will be 1000 divided by 11700 okay so what do we get we get nine percent okay so we now have some information nine percent of the total assets is cash and cash equivalents likewise let's do receivables okay so that is 17 percent okay so let me just complete this and we'll do the analysis quickly okay so here we have the common size of uh, assets and here we have the common size for the liabilities and shareholders equity. So please note that each and every line item is divided by total assets. You can also divide this by total liabilities and shareholders equity. It means one and the same thing because they both are literally equal anyways. So let's come back to the analysis part of it. Let's look at the assets. Now important thing to note here is that property, plant and equipment is 60%, right? So this would mean it's a capital intensive company. But when you look at this in isolation, 7,000 and an absolute number would not give you the whole, you know, essence of what proportion it is, right? So that's why this common size statement actually is very helpful. Likewise, let's look at uh, the total current liabilities. Total current liabilities is 39% of the total liabilities and shareholders equity. Now, if you look at total current assets, that's 34%. It essentially means that your current liabilities are much more than your current assets, right? So what's the formula for common size statement? Just as a refresher, I'll write it down. Each and every line item. So this could be cash and cash equivalents or receivables, etc. This is divided by total assets, okay? And this total assets is actually equal to total liabilities and shareholders equity. So you can use either of the terms. All right and you can multiply this by 100 so that you can represent this in the form of percentages in excel i have used this uh, percentage feature which will directly convert a decimal into percentage but you can use that as a multiplication of 100 as well to represent this as a percentage too okay so you can do either of the two let us now find out the common size balance sheet of colgate so here I have downloaded uh, six years of data from the 10K of uh, Colgate and uh, populated in the Excel sheet. So as we discussed earlier, if we just look at these absolute numbers of this balance sheet, it will be terribly difficult for us to understand and analyze. 
but if we convert that into a common size statement it will be fairly simple to look at okay so uh, uh, just a revision how do you calculate the common size of the balance sheet each and every line item that is here will be divided by total assets right so if uh, we are talking about let's say 2021 this cash and cash equivalents 832 will be divided by 15040 right so that's the total assets for 2021 likewise for 2020 it will be 888 divided by 15920 so that's how we can calculate for each and every line item which is presented in the balance sheet so let's do that right so let me scroll here and this is the place where we can uh, calculate the common size of the balance sheet so i'll start with this december 2021 cash and cash equivalents so as discussed 832 divided by 15040 and we get this as 5.5 percent so likewise for 2020 it will be 888 divided by 15920 so let me complete this uh, common size statement fairly quickly and uh, so that we can directly come to the analysis part of it okay so it's almost done yeah and i think i'm just removing these unnecessary white spaces which doesn't mean anything all right so here we go so just have a look at this common size statement earlier it was these numbers and now we have these percentages so let's analyze this what it means so here we have this cash and cash equivalents in 2016 it was 10.8 percent of the total assets and now in 2021 it is 5.5 percent so it has considerably reduced what has happened so this is a very exciting information to look at about the company right so while you're analyzing it you really want such kind of data to pop out and common size balance sheet statement is one such approach in fact it should be the primary and the first approach to look at likewise let's uh, look at uh, say for example property plant and equipment it was 31.7 percent of the total assets in 2016 but now it is 24.8 percent what happened god knows so we'll have to investigate right so how we do that we will have to go back to the annual reports and read it and analyze as to what has happened so here we are getting some information about what is the trend what has really happened but the answers we'll get it from the annual reports so let's move forward let's see on the liability side let's look at the long-term debt it was 53.8 percent and the company has done well to reduce it to 47.8 percent over a period of time so how are they doing that pretty exciting to know so that's what we get in terms of information when we actually do common size of balance sheet so now that we know how common size balance sheet is useful let's also look at the limitations part of it so one thing which i've been saying is that this gives us the information about you know what has happened but the key question about why it has happened we will not know until and unless we go about reading the annual reports so as i said you know cash and cash equivalents reduced to 5.5 percent why it happened go ahead and look at the annual report so that's number one limitation number two is that there could be inconsistency in the data while you're comparing from you know 2016 to 2021 because historically or maybe in between there could have been a change in accounting principles maybe depreciation policies changed altogether so your property plant and equipment numbers could be different for uh, let's say historical years vis-a-vis -vis, you know the years which are more re most recent so these are again one of the limitations to look at the third one is the window dressing part of it now management may want to window dress lots of uh, things which are related to assets so they might want to hide a few things which is kind of not visible in these percentages. You will also have to go through the footnotes and reading the annual report becomes an absolute must. So you will not be able to capture that window dressing part of it using this common size statement analysis. So these are some of the limitations about common size balance sheet statements. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. 
So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.